know your IS code provisions short lecture series. In this lecture, I will explain about section 7.11 that is deformation. So this section has three subsections. That is first about drift limits, second about uh, deformation of non-seismic members, and third one is on founding. So if you go into the basics, there are four virtues or four essentials for earthquake resistant design of buildings. They are configuration, stiffness, strength, and ductility. So this deformation is directly linked with stiffness of a building. Now, if you look at say stiffness, say low stiffness or high stiffness. So low stiffness means flexibility. So if building has flexibility or if building has low stiffness, it leads to several consequences. That is uh, that consequence in terms of building deformation, consequence in terms of say building contents and then about people. So in buildings, what happens is it causes, so low stiffness or flexible buildings cause large deformations. Sometimes it's, it leads to uh, P delta effect, that is secondary effect also. And if buildings are uh, close to each other, it will cause pounding. And then uh, large deformation causes damage to contents of the building, that is non-structural elements. And uh, uh, if large deformations also cause uh, discomfort to occupants. On the other hand, high stiffness. Now, if building has high stiffness, it will attract more base shear but earthquake performance of building will be much better compared to flexible buildings. So in the computation of uh, stiffness, all the factors which are contributing to stiffness should be taken into account. And while computing deformation, all the component which contribute towards the flexibility of the building, uh, that they need to be uh, taken into account. So let me go uh, into the details. Let me share my screen. So uh, know your IS code provisions, that is uh, like uh, section 7.11 deformation. So what code says is, let's look into that. Yeah, deformation of RC buildings shall be obtained from structural analysis using a structural model based on section properties given in 6.4.3. So basically uh, this section properties one second. Yeah, this section properties say for structural analysis, the moment of inertia shall be taken as in RC and masonry structures, 70% of I gross, that is gross moment, 70% of gross moment of inertia for columns and 35% of gross moment of inertia for beams. So why it is uh, taken like that? Because of uh, nonlinear analysis, because of nonlinear analysis, uh, members cracked, members, the concrete sections crack. That's why we take into consideration that is cracked moment of inertia, cracked section properties. And in uh, steel structures, I gross for both beams and columns are taken. So even though uh, sections yield, but the entire cross section will participate uh, in the deformation process. Now, Clause number 7.11.1 that is on story drift limitation. So what code says is story drift in any story shall not exceed 0 0.004 times the story height. That means what it is 0.4% of story height. So under the action of what? Under the action of design base shape. So that means the drift should not be more than 0 0.004 when the design base shape is acting on the structure and when we apply design base shape with no load factors mentioned in 6.3 that is with partial safety factors for all loads taken as one that means we take load factors you know, for several load combinations say dead load plus live load say 1.5 times 1.2 times all those load factors all those load factors should be set to one that means what the actual loads what is the deformation of the structure when the actual loads are applied. 
So let's take this as a structure and this is a deformed shape of the structure. And uh, you can see these are the story deformation. That is delta one, delta two, delta three, and delta four. Now how the drift is computed? Drift is like delta one is e small delta one is equal to capital delta one. But when it comes to small delta two, that is the difference of deformation of second floor slab, um, second floor up uh, from uh, compared to first floor. That is the uh, story drift. Like that, all floors uh, drift will be computed. And th this drift value should not be greater than 0.004 times height of the floor. So that means uh, typically if three uh, meters is the story height, what code says is inter-story drift, that is story drift shall not exceed 12 millimeters. So that's what code suggests. Then. Then the next point is displacement estimates obtained from dynamic analysis need not be scaled. So in dynamic analysis, linear dynamic analysis, usually linear dynamic analysis done is done for the buildings. For the buildings, if height is like uh, less than 15 meters and it is in zone two. That means except for buildings whose height is less than 15 meters and in zone two, rest of all the buildings we conduct, we uh, do linear dynamic analysis. So when we do linear dynamic analysis, we get say eigenvalues, that is uh, natural periods, and then uh, mode shapes. And finally we calculate uh, base shape, base shape. Now if this base shape is less than the base shape computed using empirical expression for natural period. If the base shear is less than uh, the base shear, which is computed using empirical expression for natural period, then base shear computed using dynamic analysis should be scaled up. Now in line with that, this clause number 7.11.1.2 uh, says that displacement estimates need not be scaled up, need not be scaled up because these are the realistic displacements and these, these need not be scaled up uh, while uh, scaling of the base shear. So that's what code says. Okay. Then deformation capability of non-seismic numbers. So for buildings located in seismic zones three, four and five, it shall be ensured that structural components that are not part, that are not a part of seismic force resisting system in considered direction of ground motion, but are monolithically, monolithically connected so like this one. Say it, it, uh, it might happen that building has a structural walls and a gravity frame. So uh, lateral force is resisted by structural walls and uh, these gravity frames are uh, meant for resisting gravity loads only. However, when building deforms, so when structure deforms because of, because of maintaining the compatibility conditions, because columns are connected with the same diaphragm, they tend to deform. So even under the deformation, these columns or frames should carry the gravity loads for which they are designed. So they need not carry, uh, they will not carry, they are not designed for carrying lateral load, but they have to carry uh, gravity loads. So that's what this clause says. Okay. So what it says is they do not lose their vertical load carrying capacity under induced nest net stress resultants, including additional bending moments and shear forces resulting from story deformation. So this is what clause says. That means what gravity uh, frames or gravity uh, members or non seismic members should carry their vertical should uh, should uh, not lose their vertical load carrying capacity. This is what code says. So that means what these members have to be designed to take that much deformation. They need not carry, they need not resist the lateral forces. Okay. So the deformation multiplied by R times the story displacement, deformation equal to R times the story displacement, the total. R is what response reduction factor because base shear is reduced, elastic base shear is reduced using this R value. That's why deformations have to be, displacements have to be multiplied with R uh, to get the realistic displacements. Next, coming to the third uh, subclause or subsection, 
that is separation between ad adjacent uh, buildings so two adjacent buildings or two units two adjacent units of the same building with separation joint between them like this separation joint between them between them okay like this delta delta is the separation between them shall be separated by a distance equal to r times sum of story displacement delta 1 and delta 2 so delta 1 is the displacement at that story level delta 1 is the displacement of first building and delta 2 is the displacement of second building so what code proposes is that delta should be greater than r times delta 1 plus delta 2 that means what it is the same building if it is same building then uh, response reduction factor is same for uh, both the components of the building so it should be delta 1 plus delta 2 then if it is say different buildings with different r values so delta should be greater than r1 delta 1 plus r2 delta 2 so this is actually a conservative estimate so usually uh, buildings uh, actually it should be the square root of uh, sum of squares of this product so that is the realistic estimate but code uh, gives a conservative estimate so we have to use this uh, formula now these are calculated as per 7.11.1 .1 earlier uh, clause for two buildings or two units of the same building to avoid pounding as the two buildings or two units of the same building oscillate towards each other they might oscillate towards each other so if dynamic characteristics characteristics are same then they'll oscillate in sync but if they are uh, different dynamic characteristics then they might oscillate uh, in out of uh, phase and sometimes they pound they collide with each other so this is one so here you can see uh, buildings are not of uh, they need not be at equal the slabs need not be at the equal level but next case is when the floors of adjacent units are at the uh, same level, when the floors of adjacent units are the same level, even when they collide, the effect will not be that much adverse. If the uh, diaphragm collides with the column, then because of the huge impact or huge uh, uh, shear force, damage will be more severe. But if two slabs collide, it, it may not be that much uh, severe. That's what code uh, suggests. Yeah, so buildings like this. So two buildings are there the slab levels are slabs are at the same level so the separation distance between them shall be calculated using this one say r1 delta 1 plus r2 delta 2 r1 is response reduction factor of uh, building 1 delta 1 is uh, de deformation of building 1 r2 is of uh, same uh, for building uh, 2 and delta 2 is deformation for building 2 so average of these two average of these two are taken into consideration Yeah, delta is a separation distance. So delta is greater than R1 into delta 1 plus delta 2 by 2. And if there, uh, if it is the two different buildings, R1 delta 1 plus R2 delta 2 by 2. So yeah, that's all for now. The intention of this short lecture is to help students and practicing engineers to understand IS code provisions in a better manner. And following references are used in the preparation of uh, these slides. I sincerely acknowledge the help of my research students in preparing these slides. Thank you.